Hello everyone. So today we have a really cool question on a homogeneous AMG inequality and in fact the symmetric homogeneous AMG inequality. And essentially it's uh, this is another demonstration of why if the inequality is homogeneous it's easier to solve and if in the question is already given that it's homogeneous we can see this homogeneous I think that's just great because you don't need to homogenize it again. So and yeah, anyway we will look at like two solutions to this question. And one of them is going to involve the AMG inequality and the second one is just going to be a pure synthetic solution. You don't need any AMG or whatsoever. It's just going to be an algebraic solution. That's really great, right? Because you don't need to use any of these standard inequalities and you can still solve a problem. So yeah, let's see how that goes. This is the problem number one from the USA AMO in 2018. It was also the problem number two on, I believe, the USA JMO. And the good part is that this is a pretty easy problem. The P1 on the USAMO and both P1 and P2 on the USAJMO were actually pretty easy to solve. Uh, can be done in like 10-15 minutes maximum, if you know your stuff. But the sad part is that this was the only easy problem on the test. P2 to P6 on the USAMO was absolutely monstrous. And we have discussed P2 before actually, it's just a functional equation question. And that was very insanely hard to do in the exam. Really monstrous questions. But yeah, maybe let's discuss P1 and maybe let's see how we can solve this uh, using two techniques. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the AMG inequality and how maybe you can use that to solve some problems. It's probably the most used inequality. And for most questions, really, even on the IMO, you really don't need any of these complicated techniques like Moorhead's inequality, Jensen's inequality. Mostly AMG just does the trick. There is going to be a solution which can be done by AMG. However, that may be a little bit more tricky. But yeah, most of them can be solved by AMG, that's for sure. After that, we're going to look at an alternate solution, which is going to involved no inequalities whatsoever just standard algebraic techniques after that book sessions for senior math olympiads and at the end a civil level challenging problem this video is sponsored by chinta.com since 2010 chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical olympiads physics olympiads computer science and informatics olympiads isi cmi entrances and research projects for school and college students. Okay, so what have they given us? So let ABC be three positive real numbers so that A plus B plus C is four times the cube root of ABC. And I need to prove that twice AB plus BC plus AC plus four times the minimum of A square comma B square comma C square. So one of them will be minimum. And I want to add four times the minimum of that value. And then to prove that it's greater than or equal to A square plus B square plus C square. So well, what can I see over here? First, I see the inequality is homogeneous. The degree on the left hand side is 2, the degree on the right hand side is 2. Okay, that's great. Secondly, I see that it's symmetric, right? If I replace A with B, B with C and C with A, it's the inequality is the same. So essentially, it's a symmetric homogeneous inequality. Symmetric homogeneous inequality. And that's great because whenever you have a symmetric homogeneous inequality, it's typically easier to solve. So maybe without loss of generality, I can write A is greater than equal to B, greater than equal to C. And once I do that, or maybe let's just take the other way around. Why? Because I need the minimum value, right? And I like dealing with A's more. Well, you can do it any way around, but I'll just prefer this convention. So if maybe we just take without loss of generality that A less than equal to B less than equal to C. So the minimum of A square comma B square comma C square is nothing but A square, right? Well, that's great because then we essentially only need to prove that twice of AB plus BC plus AC plus 4 times a square is greater than equal to a square plus b square plus c square. Okay, great. Now what can we do? Maybe, maybe if I just add this to ab plus bc plus ac on the right hand side, I'll get a perfect square, right? I'll get a plus b plus c whole square. So maybe that's a little bit easier to deal with. And why? Because we have this condition a plus b plus c given in the question as well. So if I add ab plus bc plus ac twice of that on both sides, I'll get something like this, right? Plus 4 a square is greater than equal to a plus b plus c whole square and in the question they had given us that a plus b plus c is equal to four times the cube root of abc so a plus b plus c whole square essentially becomes 16 times the cube root of a square b square c square well okay that's great now what can we do maybe let's just substitute that over here and maybe let's just take four common over here okay so four times a square plus ab plus bc plus ac is greater than or equal to 16 times the cube root of a square b square c square okay that's great and i can just take a common over here i'll get a plus b plus c plus bc 
is greater than or equal to 16 times the cube root of a square b square c square. Again, replace a plus b plus c with what's given in the question. I'll get 4 times a times cube root of abc plus bc is greater than or equal to 16 times the cube root of a square b square c square. After this, I just divide both sides by 8. And um, I'll get, well, what do we get? We will essentially get uh, one half of a times the cube root of abc. Well, four times this actually. Because we have four times cube root of abc. Yeah. So this will be four times a times cube root of abc plus bc is greater than or equal to, this will be two times the cube root of a square b square c square. And so what, what is after this is left? So maybe if I can just put this 4a inside this cube root, what will I get? I'll get the cube root of 4a whole cubed times bc, abc plus bc whole divided by 2 is greater than or equal to cube root of 8a square b square c square. Again, I just put this 2 inside the cube root. So if I may just simplify this a little bit, I just need to prove that the cube root of 64 a raised power 4bc plus the cube root of b cube c cube Again, just putting this in the cube root, divided by 2 is greater than or equal to the cube root of 8 times a square b square c square. And so essentially what I've done till now is I've reduced the given inequality into this. So I just need to prove this inequality over here. And if I manage to prove this, that's it, that's done. I just need to somehow prove this inequality. Now, when I see this, so what I essentially did is I, I just kind of like simplified this inequality in the question to this, right, to this form that we have over here. And if I prove this, we are done, right? So whenever I see this, I get the intuition of the AMGM, right? X plus Y divided by two is greater than or equal to root XY, right? That's one of the most simplest cases of the AMGM inequality where we have only two numbers. So maybe let's just see if AMGM is applicable over here. I mean, let's just try a little bit of hit and try maybe. If I just take X to be this entire quantity, so basically X will be cube root of 64 a is power 4 bc if i take y is equal to cube root of b cube c cube maybe let's just try and use amgm and let's see what we get so x plus y divided by 2 what will that be that will be the cube root of 64 a is power 4 bc plus the cube root of b cube c cube by 2 which is our lhs and if i just maybe compute the value of square root of xy which is what we have on the right hand side right in the amgm inequality i'll get the cube root of 64 a raised power 4 bc times what do we have over here we'll get b cube c cube and whole raised to the power 1 by 2 because we need to take the square root as well so root xy would be cube root of 64 a raised power 4 b raised power 4 c raised power 4 and we take its square root so root xy would indeed be the cube root of 8 a square b square c square and actually that's the right hand side, right? If you see the right hand side over here is cube root of eight a square b square c square. So we can actually see that this is of the form x plus y by two is going to root x y. Therefore, this inequality is actually true and we've proven it by AMGM. So essentially what I did is that I had an inequality given the question. I reduced it down to this form. That if I prove this inequality, the original inequality will be proof. It suffices to prove this new inequality that I had formed. And this new inequality is actually already solved via the AMGM inequality because this holds for all a comma b comma c, right? This is essentially the AMGM inequality it holds for all a comma b comma c. And yes, and that's great because that is pretty much done. Now let's maybe look at an alternate solution, right? Let's maybe look at an alternate solution, and this is not going to involve any kind of AMGM whatsoever, right? And over here, maybe let's just assume without loss of generality, a greater than or equal to b greater than or equal to c, right? Last time we took the other way around, it really doesn't matter what you take, but let me let's just try it around this way. So here I'll get twice of AB plus BC plus AC plus 4C square is going to be equal to A square plus B square plus C square. Now here what I'll do is I'll take 2BC plus 2AC over here and I'll just send the other things over there. So I'll just get A square plus B square minus 2AB and minus um, how much minus 3C square over here. So 2bc plus 2ac is greater than or equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab minus 4ab minus 3c square. So basically just added 2ab and subtracted 2ab. Or maybe like added 4ab and subtracted 4ab. 
So now, now what can I do? I can just take 2c common over here. I'll get a plus b. It's greater than or equal to a plus b whole squared minus 4ab minus 3c squared. I'll just take 4ab to the other side. So I'll get 4ab is greater than or equal to a plus b whole squared minus 2c times a plus b minus 3c squared. And if I just multiply by c on both sides, I'll get 4abc is greater than or equal to c times a plus b whole squared minus 2c squared times a plus b minus 3c cubed. So essentially, if I just multiply by 16 on both sides now, I'll get 64abc is greater than or equal to 16c times a plus b whole squared minus 32c squared times a plus b minus 48c cubed. And once that is done, now that is actually easier to deal with. Because now I can essentially the left hand side is 4 times the cube root of abc whole cubed. That is essentially the point of multiplying by 64 because you can write it in this form. And this in the question is nothing but a plus b plus c. But anyways, on the right hand side you will still have 16c times a plus b whole squared minus 32c squared times a plus b minus 48c cubed. And that's great because you can write this cube root of abc 4 times this as a plus b plus c. So this effectively just becomes a plus b plus c whole cubed is greater than or equal to 16c times a plus b whole squared minus 32c squared times a plus b minus 48c cubed. And it's really great because I can actually factorize the right hand side. If I just take a c common over here, maybe let's just take 16c common over here, I'll get a plus b whole squared minus 2 times a plus b, right? minus 3c squared and this can actually be factorized very neatly so i'll get a plus b plus c whole cube is greater than or equal to 16c times a plus b plus c times a plus b minus 3c well that's great because a plus b plus c and this can be cancelled out so you'll get second power over here so i just need to prove that a plus b plus c whole squared is greater than or equal to 16c times a plus b minus 3c so effectively, this can be simplified down to a plus b whole squared plus c squared plus 2 times a plus b times c, right? This is essentially coming from the fact if I just take maybe y is x equal to a plus b and if I just take y is equal to c, this just becomes x plus y whole square, right? That's effectively a plus b whole squared plus 2c times a plus b plus c square. And this I need to prove is greater than or equal to 16c times a plus b minus 48c squared. And yes, let me just finish this off now. So this essentially becomes a plus b whole squared minus 14c times a plus b. If I just take this to the right hand side, plus 49c squared, if I take this to the right hand side, is equal to 0. Sorry, is greater than or equal to 0. So I'll just get a plus b minus 7c whole square is greater than or equal to 0. And this is obviously holding for all real numbers a comma b comma c therefore our inequality is proven essentially a square term is always greater than or equal to zero right so this essentially holds for all real numbers a comma b comma c that was given to us in the question and therefore since this inequality holds our original inequality that we started with also holds that was given in the question and this was the alternate solution so if you actually see over here we did not need to use any amgm whatsoever and yeah this was just a nice synthetic solution so yeah, I really hope you learned something from that. And this was an easy question, right? It can be done in like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. But obviously the other five questions in the USMO, they were quite brutal to say the least. Okay, so moving on to some book sessions for senior math Olympiads. We have the IMO Compendium. We have Polynomials by Barbeu. We have Elementary Number Theory by Sierpinski. Graph Theory by Harari. Combinatrix by Brualdi. Secrets and Inequalities and Functional Equations How to Solve Them by Christopher D. Small. Okay, so at the end we have a similar but challenging from But before that, before that, before that, I want you to find out. So in, in the even question that we just solved, right, there was an inequality. Right? There was an equality over here as well. So I wanted to find out where does the equality hold? Right? So where does the equality hold? Essentially, what is the equality case? So find out the values of A, B, and C at which the equality holds. Right? So basically, basically, if I just go back to the question. I wanted to find out where this equality holds. So instead of this inequality, if we had the inequality, if we had the equality, where does this hold? Right? On what values of a comma b comma c does the equation satisfy instead of the inequality? Then you will definitely get a specific set of values of a comma b comma c that satisfies the equation. 
right? And maybe just try and find that. And once you're done with that, maybe just try the same level challenging problem. And this again involves a little bit of the same same kind of stuff, AMGM. And this will be really nice problems. It's not the easiest problem in the world, but yeah, it's really nice. But uh, if you're able to make any progress on it or if you're able to solve it, let me know in the comment section. And until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much and bye-bye. The programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics. And they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR and IISC. For more information, visit chinta.com.